It's time to talk about what's going on in the world of Magic the Gathering's vintage investing. Vintage investing. When most people hear those words for Magic the Gathering, they will think of reserve list cards. They'll think of black lotuses. They're going to dive in there and think of the mocks. They're going to think Time Twister, Dual Lands, maybe some Tabernacle of Pendle Veil, maybe even a Mishra's Workshop or a Guardian Beast. Welcome back, everyone. MTG Moxman here. And guess what? Vintage investing in magic cards is a lot more than that. It goes a lot deeper and covers a lot more area than people realize. Yes, the reserve list cards do contain the most powerful cards in Magic the Gathering, and that's why they're on the reserve list, because of the value that's being protected in those cards. But they're not the only vintage cards out there. When you think of old Magic cards, how far does your brain go back? How far do you travel back in time thinking of sets? Some people don't go beyond Khans of Tarkir. Some people go back to Onslaught. Maybe Odyssey. Maybe you're going back to the Urza block. Maybe you're going back to Ice Age. Then you start getting to really old stuff. The game is 30 years old. Vintage investing for me is anything 1999 or before. Okay, That's kind of how my brain seems to divvy up how old cards are. It's not that the stuff after 1999 is not old. Of course it is. It's still 20-something years. But the print runs pre-1999 get a lot smaller, a lot tighter. The foils in that era are much harder to come across. And when you get back to the ABU, the Four Horsemen sets, we're talking by today's standards, microscopic print runs and they do not have to be just reserve list cards you're after when people ask me i got all these emails when i was on vacation i didn't get a chance because the internet's pretty spotty where i was but now i've taken the last 24 hours i've really been reading things going through people's questions i haven't really answered everything i just thought it'd be easier to put it into a video for everyone in the short answered everyone's question what happened to like investing in like old magic cards nothing has happened just because it's not popping up on the big radar of a massive YouTube channel somewhere or some huge articles being written about how fantastic these cards are doesn't mean it's not still going on in the backdrop scene. Most investors in Magic would prefer to stay in the backdrop to keep the prices low so they can slowly accumulate cards without having a massive dent put into a pocketbook, right? You don't want to put your shekels out People find out what you're doing and that causes FOMO and people jump on board. When it comes to vintage old school stuff, you want to save every dollar you can. Some people who are buying these cards have no intention of selling. A lot of us use that phrase, hold the line, right? When it comes to reserve list cards, but it also counts for vintage investing in general. There are people who like to get alpha, beta, and unlimited lands. They like to have those vintage blinged out lands to add to commander decks, to old school decks they're playing with, or just to a binder to admire for years to come while protecting the cards held within. I mean, these cards still get played with, right? This cardboard can only last so long. They were meant to be played. And that collectible aspect has driven some players to hoard these cards just to keep them protected and keep them around for generations to come, to pass down to family members as heirlooms, as collectibles. And again, it isn't always, although it can be, the reserve list cards. It could be an Alpha Mox, a Beta Mox, but just as likely, it could be a Beta Hypnotic Spectre. It could be a Phantasmal Terrain from Alpha Edition you happen to have found a near mint copy. There are so many old school vintage things to collect and there is such a diverse audience out there who like to collect these things. There are people who I know who only like to collect Wily Wolf, Desert Nomad. There are people out there who collect the Kumbaya Witches from Arabian Nights. When you go back to old sets like that that have a 5 million card print run, it is microscopic. And when people ask me, what's with all the Arabian Nights cards disappearing? They're not really disappearing. Near mint cards are hard to find, but when I took a cursory look around all the stores I deal with, there's still a large assortment of cards available for players to enjoy, and they're still under 20 bucks in a lot of cases. It just depends on what cards you're going to go after. If you're going for the Ogre, I think 401 Games had some for 5 bucks still. Heavily played, yes, but they're still available. They're still out there. TCG players, same thing. You can get near mint cards in cards like Arabian Nights, uh, Desert and stuff, for like $14 US. 
These are near mint condition cards is what they're rating them at. You'd have to look at it, of course, but they're still out there is what I'm saying. But when you put a fine tooth comb through those sets, yes, the stock is dwindling. There's still availability for those who want to get them, but that won't go on forever. Arabian Nights, Antiquities with what, a 15 million card print run? You got Legends at 35 million, the Dark's around 65 million. Those are all very small print runs when you compare it to anything today, and there's not a lot left out there. When you start getting to cards like Ice Age that never really accumulated in value, even the ones on the reserve list have never really spiked up massively, there's a lot of cards out there. There's still quite a few near mint, and there's still a lot of sealed boxes out there that could be cracked in the future. That doesn't mean it's not a collectible. It just means the value will not be attached to cards like that, and that's where a lot of low-end, new investors to the game go to. They go to the cheaper, low-end reserve list cards, low-end collectible, investable cards that they enjoy. It doesn't have to be an expensive card to be a collectible. If you're hoping to turn a profit on that, that's something you're going to have to like decide for yourself. A lot of the cards I collect, I don't care if they ever go up in value because I have no intention of selling. I want to play with the cards I collect. The sealed boxes behind you here, yeah, those are investments I hope will turn me a profit at some point in 20 years from now. I'm not looking at it as a short-term flip investment of four to five years. You got to look between seven to nine years. And a lot of players who invest in old school magic cards, when you start getting down to like the Urza Saga blocks, when you start going to Weatherlight, Mirage, Tempest, there's still vast quantities of these cards available. They're really out there and there's a lot of them. That doesn't mean that somebody's not buying some once in a while and collecting them and, and trying to build up small stashes of particular cards. Of course they are. That happens every day. For those of you guys who watch my Hot 10 Reserve List videos, those are Reserve List cards that are being bought up, right? And they hit the Hot 10 because somebody bought 20, 30, 40, 50 copies, a couple hundred copies, because they're so cheap for players to get into. Now, when you're investing in these cards, though, when you're saying, I want to have these to flip for a profit, those players may be more selective and going for near mint cards, going for graded versions of the cards. And when I took a look around, and I, again, I didn't answer everyone's emails on this. I know you guys put it out to me, but I thought it was easier for the video's sake to just say, there's a lot out there. When I start branching out and touching base with people, there's a lot of cards out there. Certain cards are lower stock. You're not going to find tons of Library of Alexandria sitting around or Guardian Beasts from Arabian Nights. Arabian Nights cards are harder to come across, especially in decent condition because they were played with. We didn't have sleeves back then. And it's not like people are cracking open new packs of Arabian Nights to add new stock for people to collect. So yes, it's lower. When it comes to the dark, I've told you guys, it's just becoming a set that people recognize for the value that's held within it. It's still going to have a really good roller coaster for the next 10 years, but inevitably it's going to keep going up. That's the way of investing and collecting in these cards. And with Wizards of the Coast putting kind of a little small magnifying glass on Legends, you might see a player base that has never been exposed to these cards taking an interest. Maybe somebody decides to build a Kobold deck and they go out and buy a whole bunch of five, six dollar Kobolds from Legends and fill out their collection. That could put a dent in the stock if 20 people did that. If 20 players all decide they need a 40 of each Kobold to have to their collections, that probably would cause an issue in the collectible world for kobolds because there's not that many actually available out there. But there is some for the odd player who wants to get them. So just because the market's quiet, just because we're not seeing Black Lotus, uh, you know, Alpha 9.5s going for millions of dollars, doesn't mean they're not exchanging hands. It just means the market right now is more tuned in on other things. Double Masters 2022, Dominaria United, Brothers War, has sapped a lot of attention from those older school collectible vintage markets because the older school players remember those sets. We started in Dominaria. We started with Antiquities. We're hyped on Legends because those are the sets we grew up with, so our eyes tend to turn that way, and that means our wallets go that way as well. It means we just kind of hold off. Those collectible cards from 1993 have been around for 30 years. They're not disappearing overnight, although at times it has happened. When these buyouts come and when the waves do come, and they will return, these buyouts aren't done. I see buyouts all the time, smaller scale ones, but they don't end. They're in small waves now. And if interest swings back to the reserve list en masse, 
we are in for a good time. It's going to be a great roller coaster of everyone going, what's going on? With cards like Fast Bond shooting back up, Brain Geyser going back up, Fork, cards in Revised, cards in the Dark, cards that have only just started being tapped into for the collectible, investable side of Magic. Those are the ones that will have an uptick again quicker than other ones. Remember, the more expensive cards take longer to start going up the ramp. The lower end cards get affected first because they're cheaper to buy. causes a spike in the market that ripples outward and heads to those high end collectibles. So when people ask me, are people still buying these cards? Yeah. Have you watched it? Dual lands been being bought a lot right now. They are being purchased. They're being bought en masse. And it's a lot of heavily played and moderately played copies. So players can save a few bucks, but still actually get their hands on a dual land. They've been trading in newer stuff from Dungeons and Dragons, Commander Legends, Battle for Baldur's Gate, some textured foils, and they're diving into cards they never dreamed they could own. I remember players just trading in a cause like textured and they went straight toward a bayou straight toward it. They said, I just covered 60% of that beat up Bayou. So now I have my very first dual land mocks, man, it blows me away. And when that happens, when you get your first dual land, it is like an adrenaline rush. And you start looking at other cards you thought you would never look at. And you start branching out. And for those people who are new and get a bigger, a bigger paying job, more financially stable and secure, maybe have a few extra ducats to spend, they start branching out into those sets and purchasing those cards for the first time. And they're not releasing them. They're not doing it for investing to trade and flip. They want to have them to enjoy and play. Ones they've only imagined going back to. As younger Magic players grow up and get exposed to some of these cards, not everyone dives into old school investing. But if even one out of a thousand does it, there's still players going in and buying these cards. When you look at Unlimited for Magic the Gathering, you realize how cheap those cards still are. That's why players started buying the lands, started picking up cards like Brain Geyser for like 60 bucks only a year ago because it was so cheap to do so. Now it's a couple hundred bucks and it hasn't really drifted down. But some of these cards are in a tighter supplied market because as players collected it and invested in it and it's reserve list and they're holding on because it's alto vintage kind of old school magic stuff, they're not letting it go. They've held it for their collections. So yes, it appears there's a much tighter supply on certain cards over other ones. But as players get in, they're going to be drawn to the cheaper ones if they're new to doing this. And they're asking me, what's the risk if I spend $8 buying a couple of these unlimited low-end cards? Really, there's not a lot of risk if you go for near mint because you don't know where the market will go. And really, 8 bucks is what the price of a, of a small meal somewhere at a fast food restaurant? You skip one day of that, get yourself a card you can enjoy forever. I see where people's minds go. But when people ask me, is the market dead? No, it's quiet. And that leads to better deals. Better chances to get cards you've always dreamed about, which is what so many of those quiet investors prefer. A quieter market that nobody's talking about. They're sitting there like in the Wizard of Oz and the Yellow Brick Road Ride. They're in the Emerald City and they're saying, don't look behind the curtain. Look over there. The Tin Man's getting a heart. Pay attention to that. And that's all so they can start picking up some more of these cards before the prices do shift eventually. It goes in waves. It goes in cycles. Nothing bad is happening. There's a lot of money out there. It's quiet right now. It's a great time to get into these collectible side of these cards. And it doesn't have to be reserve list. Some people go out there and just buy the commons and uncommons from the dark, but they aim for near mint for people who do build collectibles. When they say, I want to get a collection of the dark, I want to look for the best card I can. Well, if you got near mint copies of a card for 30 cents and you bought a hundred copies and you're charging five bucks a copy now, that's still quite the profit margin. It doesn't appear it at the time, but it really will add up over time. And that's what a lot of players end up doing for those flipper and investors. And for the guys who are just getting in, they say five bucks for a card for a near mint version of it. The card's 30 years old. I don't mind paying the five bucks. It's near mint. I'm happy. This guy's got good feedback. It just goes in waves. And when you're used to the wave, like I've been around long enough to see it all happen now, it's cool. It's calm. There's cards out there. There's cards for you guys to enjoy. If there's a particular card you're after, hit me up on the email. I'll take a look around and see if I can find it for you from some of the people I deal with. Maybe it's out there. Maybe it's not. It never hurts to ask. That's what I'm here for, right? We're a community. We got to help each other out.
but vintage investing not dead at all it's alive and well and there's a lot of niche players out there enjoying their collectibles for the investing flipping side of things for reserve list cards it's huge you're just not hearing about it that's why i'm putting this video out there so if there's cards you're after take a look around look at the cards i'm watching for the reserve list look at the cards i watch on those kind of videos and you'll see the stuff that's kind of moving and shaking or what people are starting to pay attention to anyway guys i've taken up enough of your time we're here we're at the end thanks a lot for tuning in thanks a lot for hanging out with me the market's strong it's quiet but it's strong enjoy it guys enjoy these low prices while they last and have a great world great world have a great day wherever you are in the world of magic the gathering because it is a big world and that's where we're at cheers guys have a great one and of course, guys, a big shout out to all the fantastic patrons on the channel. You guys make these videos possible, and I want to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share this with you. Thanks again, patrons. A little bit of this, and a little bit of that. What are you doing here? The video's done. It's over. I wasn't expecting anybody here at this time. I'm not clean shaven. Hair's ruffled, and I'm looking at buying more vintage magic cards. I know. So many good cards out there with so little time to collect them all. Can't help ourselves, right, guys? So here you are at the end expecting something crazy to happen, and there's nothing crazy and happening. Nothing. My work's trying to get hold of me. I'm sitting here talking to you guys, and it's a great day to be in magic because, yeah, vintage collecting is quiet right now. The old school stuff. I love it because I'm just like nitpicking the best cards I can find. I hope you guys are too. Have an awesome day, guys. Enjoy the day. You deserve it. You deserve it. I, I gotta go back to this. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'll see you guys soon though. I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel.